everyone, welcome to another Underrated Film Saturday, and today I thought it would be interesting to discuss a film that is rather unique for this last week that are in that we are in for the month of love, which is February. Um, and that film is End of Watch, starring Jake Gyllenhaal and Michael Piena. I believe that's how you pronounce it. I apologize if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. Um, and basically they are two cops working the streets of LA and pretty much working the really bad, bad streets of LA. <laughs> like they are in the, in the center pretty much of where all of the horrible crime happens and all of that. So they have to deal with a lot of stuff. And the film clearly showcases that throughout. Um, their characters' names include Brian Taylor and Miguel or Mike Zavala, respectively. So Jake Gyllenhaal plays Brian, um, Michael Fiennes plays Miguel. Uh, we see this film shot primarily uh, using a little bit of shaky cam, but it is not distracting in any way. Sometimes it's kind of shown through Brian's perspective because sometimes he's just randomly shooting stuff. And it really gives this really down to earth, um, you know, really, uh, it just gives this really, it just makes this film seem more grounded within reality, which I think was really the film's intention because they try to um, really uh, emphasize the kind of day-to-day -day that cops kind of go through. And seeing it through that lens, I think, was really interesting, and I liked how the film did that. Is there a little bit of shaky cam? Yeah, but I don't think it's as... You know they don't they don't hide anything like in uh, Hunger Games. Um, they they show you the scenes. They show you the intensity. You know, and that's why I really enjoyed this film. I think a lot more actually than Hunger Games because they didn't cheap out with the shaky cam and they just went for. I think it is rated R uh, because it does get a little bit graphic at times with the violence. So again, something to be prepared for. Uh, so it's it's a it's a very intense. Um, it feels a lot like the show Southland uh, that was on NBC and then on TNT, and then apparently they canceled it for I think really no good reason, um, but they canceled it apparently. So <laughs> yeah, so if you are familiar with that kind of medium, uh, that's kind of how End of Watch does that, but within a film as opposed to um, a television show like Southland where it's, uh, where there's numerous seasons and then they cancel it for no good reason. <laughs> there's actually an ending here, so, so that's good. Um, uh, again, even though this is not a love film or a film that primarily focuses on the topic, it is does play a pivotal role to the story because this is a love of friendship. Um, again, it's not a romantic love. And again, I think love can be expressed in various different ways, okay? You don't need to automatically put the romantic label on it. Um, and this is clearly expressed with um, Mike and Brian throughout the film. They are... They are like probably the biggest, one of the coolest and <laughs> and funniest bro uh, bro friendships that I've ever seen. Um, it's just so down to earth. It's just so relatable. Um, I think to a male audience uh, as well as even a female audience. Heck, I I enjoyed their banter and their kind of going back with each other and whatnot. It was realistic. It felt down to earth. It felt like these were real people. And I was just so blown away by that. I was just like, wow, this is such a breath of fresh air. <laughs> this is so great. Uh, so I really enjoyed their, their uh, relationship and their dynamics to one another. And they really do express that love of friendship within this film. 
Um, and you actually do see how it plays a pivotal role within the plot if you choose to watch the film. Uh, so that's, I think, something that's very important to note. Now, I kind of wanted to talk about, uh, too, how um, we usually don't, and again, this is a partially reason why I think this film is underrated, we usually, and it's providing something unique at the same time, we usually don't see a friendship love between two men. Usually friendship love is expressed more for women, uh, women, women bonding uh, in that sense of friendship. Um, and we don't really see things through the male perspective. And I think partially the reason for that is because um, men are seen as the more unemotional um, showing uh, gender. So, uh, so, so seeing them in that way, I think, and again, they don't really, they're, they're, they're not like, they're, they're you know, they, they convey their characters well. I mean, they're not some cops just kind of sitting there, you know, doing nothing. I mean, they, they, they act like they're, they act like how I think real men would act. Uh, it's just that we don't see it on this kind of a level usually. Um, because I think what happens is, is a lot of people automatically assume, oh, it's a bromance. Like these two people, you know, automatically, you know, since they're together and they're hanging out, that means that, you know, it's, they, they kind of, tr they kind of mock it almost, I think, a lot of the time within, uh, within comedies, you see this a lot where there's two men bonding and then they automatically get the kind of, you know, you know, they, they, they get the gay card, basically. They, they get the, you know, the ha-ha, they're acting like they care about each other, you know, ha-ha, they're acting like they love each other. When, <laughs> when really, it, it's a different kind of love that they have for each other, obviously, and that's clearly displayed within this film. But I think usually what ends up happening is people don't really gravitate towards these kinds of films that focus on it, and focus on these kinds of friendships, because usually, um, again, because because usually with men we don't see really um, men bonding in this way. Usually, it's done as a comedic effect, or um, or it's or they're just kind of in the background, you know. They're 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 there for maybe you know they're there as sidekicks. They're not the the the, the focus, but. These two guys are the main focus throughout the entire film. So I thought that was a really nice change of pace. I thought that was really a good choice um, uh, as far as writing is concerned to focus on these two and actually make it feel like a genuine friendship and one that is based around the love of friendship and, again, not displaying it in a way that is in any way, I think, shape or form, um, it, mocking it. Um, they, they, they could play it completely straight, <laughs> both literally and figuratively speaking, uh, because they do end up having romantic relationships uh, with, with women later on and are technically already Miguel is, is married. He even talks about his wife a lot, which is funny. So, yeah, I mean, they, they share... And again, Ryan eventually uh, ends up getting married uh, to to a woman. Um, the one who's into the woods, I forget her name, uh, but uh, yeah. So so, so you, you see them sharing their lives together, and that you see that kind of community coming in. And again, that's the kind of communal love that I think the these two share for one another. You know, because they share their lives together. Um, they they're a part of it. Um, they're a part of one another's lives. Um, and uh, that's why the relationship comes off as very powerful. And you do feel invested, I think, at the end of the film. You do get a sense of what these two, what these um, two characters have to go through and the sort of, um, the, the thrills and the adrenaline um, and what they ultimately end up sort of sacrificing um 
So I, I think that's something that's very important to note, and I think a lot of it has to do with their friendship and with their strong bond, because that is really emphasized throughout the film. Um, and there are funny moments. There are genuinely little funny moments where you feel like these these characters are just so down to earth, and you know you feel like these people exist. Um, so you know, the, like these are the kinds of cops that you would maybe encounter in real life. You know, so. And again, it's it's really emphasized as part of the film, um, and I really enjoy it for those reasons. Um, there is some tragedy that ultimately ends up happening, but um, but I think that even beyond that tragedy that ends up happening, their their bond is really strong, um, and it's it's so uh, at points it it makes me really sad watching it. Um, so so. Don't be prepared for, you know, kind of a, again, a comedy. It's it's really a, a drama. Uh, and again, usually we don't see this. Usually male characters, when they have friendships, it's funny. It's purely based within comedy. Um, whereas here, there's kind of a little bit of a balance. Um, but mostly, most of the time, it's treated as serious. It's treated as dramatic. And uh, I thought that was a really nice... Um, nice change of pace uh, when it comes to showcasing these kinds of relationships. And I think it really, really works to the film's advantage. Um, so, uh, again, uh, I think it's important to note that, um, you know, I think these kinds of films I think I'd like to see more of personally. Um, but I think I can understand why some people may not gravitate towards it because they feel like maybe showing male friendship in that way is just, I don't know, they, they think there's something wrong with it. Um, or, uh, or, you know, some people don't like maybe that it's not maybe as PC, you know, and it's, it's, it's not, and again, there's a lot of grit to this film too. It's, it's not a clean film. There's a lot of, um, dirt and grime in it and I think largely partly has to do with the setting I mean they're in LA they're in the they're in the heartland of, of, of where a lot of crime happens and where there's a lot of problems and you know they're just two guys who are in it and they're playing it serious and that's why I really felt that this was something unique and something different but I can understand why probably a general public wouldn't gravitate towards it because um, because usually we don't see male friendships done this way. Usually I think people still like to see the comedic. They like to see, oh, ha ha, you know, look at these these guys being funny and, you know, ha ha ha. You know, you know they, they don't show the relationship really all that seriously. Um, whereas here I think it was completely serious while at the same time providing some comedy, and I thought that really worked to the film's advantage, and it created a very down-to-earth approach. And I think that's ultimately why the film is underrated and is overlooked, because I don't think the general public in particular gravitates towards male friendship films being focused on in this way. Um, and again, their friendship does play a pivotal role in the movie. It does impact the plot, it does impact the characters, everyone that's really involved throughout. Um, and there's a lot of tragedy that ultimately ends up happening. And and when and then at the end, uh, you feel like that even no matter that even though there's tragedy that ultimately ends up happening, you know you still feel the weight and the impact that these two characters had on each other. And, uh, so it's, it's very, t it's a very touching film in that sense. It's, and again, it, it is very sad because, you know, throughout the majority of the film, you're just seeing these two people talking to one another. You're seeing these two people going out and doing things. You know, you see these two people together. So when ultimately the tragedy ends up happening, you, you really do feel the weight. You do feel like these people went through something together and, I thought that was just brilliant. I haven't seen films that have done it in this way and at this level. 
um, at least a male friendship film. I, I haven't seen it. There's just not a whole lot of films out there that show male friendship in this very serious way. Um, and, uh, and, uh, yeah, so I think that's really, though, ultimately all I can say about the film without really giving anything away. Really, pretty much all you need to know in regards to the plot is, again, there are two cops, um, Brian, played by Jake Gyllenhaal, Miguel, played by, or, uh, yeah, Miguel, played by Michael, uh, and basically they're, they're going through a, a plot that ultimately involves gangs um, and crime and whatnot because uh, they're cops and they are in LA so pretty much that's really the scenario but it's really ultimately the weight of these what these two characters have together as far as a connection is concerned and it is emphasized that they are partners that they are um, again you know how like cops uh, usually have like two people that uh, go out and do uh, patrolling and all that stuff and that's emphasized within this film as is they are partners so again a lot of time is spent with them a lot of time is devoted to them and it's nice to see them kind of you know having their own separate lives but at the same time sort of being a, a part of one of those lives um, and you see that really within the film and when ultimately the tragedy ends up occurring you do um, you do really really sympathize with them and you really do feel the weight of the friendship and the the love that they felt for one another not romantic okay friendship love there is a difference uh <laughs> so 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 yeah uh that's that's something that i that i that i really want to emphasize um but i think that's really ultimately all i can say i don't want to give the tragedy away i don't want to give what happens really within the plot i really think that that should be something that the audience should experience um and uh consider before they see the film like if you don't like you know if you don't like <laughs> la or um i mean I'm sure you can not like L.A. and enjoy this film because it actually shows you, you know, the really bad parts of L.A. And even if you do like L.A., I'm sure that you can find some enjoyment uh, out of this, too, because they kind of bring in a little bit of the culture and all of that. Uh, so, yeah, they sort of bring out the good and the bad of, of L.A. Um, and again, it is very violent. It is very graphic. So I just want you to be prepared for that because they do not try to shy away within this film um and they kind of show um they 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 they, they do show the bad guys as being really really bad and um there's not a huge amount of um you know the, the these characters the cops are really fleshed out so again they're they're not you know they have dimensions to them the bad guys not so much um but I think that's kind of understandable because um, a lot of the um, uh, a lot of the those kinds of I guess villains you could say uh, usually have probably really bad backgrounds. But again, it, it's not about them. It's not about their story. It's about the cops' story. So if you want villains that are maybe a little bit more fleshed out this film probably won't give it to you but at the same time they're still very threatening they still come off as very intimidating and we do ultimately want this to see the heroes win and uh ultimately make their arrests on these people um so yeah that's that's just something i think also that's important to take note but again i don't want to give the tragedy away because the tragedy is something that is very pivotal to the film and i don't want to spoil it or ruin it for everybody or go into exactly what the tragedy is so um my lips are sealed on that uh but uh, i think that's really ultimately all i can say when it comes to this film but again if there are any questions comments concerns i'd be more than happy to answer them thank you so much for watching i hope you all have a pleasant day week month and year and i hope to see you all in the next video take care bye bye